Hello everyone, Linda Israel here. Thank you so much for watching. Hey, if you would, please give this video a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And definitely go down below, use the comment box and leave me a comment about what you thought about this project. So I'm continuing on the monochrome journal that I am creating. And today I'm gonna to show you two different journal pages. One of them will be using a mop-up page and adding elements to it using rubber stamps and fabric and some calico collage images and then the second will be using some calico collage images and fabric and paper and stencils to make a page so why don't you come along and watch this tutorial I'm continuing on with making the pages for this monochrome journal. And this was a mop-up page that I was created in our first video where I showed you the supplies of what we were using for the junk journal. And this was the diamond with flare stencil with it's black tattered angels is a mop-up page. So I'm gonna turn it over and I have the secret garden rubber stamp. So I'm gonna ink that up with archival ink jet black. Make sure I got a good inking. And I'm gonna stamp it in this lower right hand corner. So it's just a faint image there in the background. And I kind of like that. I've got the spider mum stamp and I wanna take it and stamp all the way around the outside edge. I'll rotate the stamp so that I kind of get a different impression when I go around. I have a stencil from the January 2021 Artistic Stencil Club, and I've got Distress Ink Black Soot and an oval blending brush. I want to come in here and just add a little bit of pattern in between. I'm going to check my work. I like that. Just a subtle pattern in the background there. I'll go ahead and fold my page in half. And if there's any white space that I don't like, I'll go ahead and use my blending tool and just kind of fill that in just a little bit. I've got a scrap of a book page. You can probably see there's a little bit of text right there at the top. I know, my fingers are dirty. I, this is messy work, y'all. I've got from the Journal Quartet one of the words that says journal. There's four different fonts. And I'm going to stamp this on this little scrap of book page. And I'll stamp it twice. And then I'm going to take this and cut it. Now I want to put this on my page, but I think it needs something else behind it. I've got some scrap of fabric here. What if I put just a little bit of a scrap of fabric right behind that? It does, you're not going to see all of it, but it's just a little border of black. All right, let's put some distress inks around the edges of the word journal. Okay, I'm liking that. I'm going to go ahead and glue these together. So I'm just going to use a Lean's Tacky Glue and come in here and add a little bit of glue and glue the fabric and the paper together. And then I'll glue the whole thing down. So I like that. All right, so let's turn this over. And decorate this side now this time around I have a little journal card note card that was in my stash and I have one of these calco collage faux postage and I want to make this a sewn element so what I'm going to do is glue this together pop that right in the middle and then I'll go over to my sewing machine and put a zigzag stitch all the way around this. I'm over at my sewing machine. I'm using a regular needle, regular thread. I've got it set up for a zigzag stitch. Mine is an electronic sewing machine. So I have it set on two and two for the stitch length and stitch width for my zigzag. Also do note that you need to make sure that you don't have any wet glue before you go and sew. That's why I only put glue right in the middle because I don't plan to sew in the middle portion. If you plan to sew in an area where you did put some glue, just beware that it needs to dry first. So I'm just gonna start here in the corner and stitch all the way around. I 
When I get to the end, I will raise my presser foot and rotate my paper around and then continue stitching and I'll do that all the way around. And that's what it looks like. I already made another one earlier on and then now what I want to do is take this and I want to trim it to fit. So I'm looking at this, trying to decide if I want to put anything down below here. Let me see something. That might look kind of cute. I've got some little words still left over. What if I put those on the bottom? All right, so I'm just going to cut this in half. I'll go and apply some Distress Ink all the way around the edges. Okay, so what I want to do is glue this piece down, but I want it to be a tuck spot, a tiny tuck spot right here, and then this is going to be a tuck spot on the back side. So I'm just going to put glue on two sides of this faux postage that's from Calico Collage, and I printed this as monochrome on ivory paper. That's the beginnings of my pieces that are going to go in the corners here to be a tuck spot. I have a little bit of lace here, and I think what I want to do is have this lace peek out behind and stick off the page. So I'm going to take this and cut my lace the same length or height of my card or tuck spot. I don't need this excess mesh area, so I'm going to trim that off. All right, now what I want to do is put a little bead of glue down the side here to attach the lace. And I'll do the same on the other side. Now these I want to glue down here in the corner, so I'm just going to put glue on these two sides, on top of the lace, and then the paper as well. Okay, we'll set this aside to dry for a moment. I have a couple of journaling cards. These are craft card stock, and I've got the Garden Rose rubber stamp, and I thought I would stamp that on here. I'll stamp it, oh, maybe in the corner here. It kind of comes off the corner. And then this side, I'm going to stamp in the opposite corner. I'm liking that. I happen to have a little uh, square of fabric. So what I'm going to do is get my fabric scissors out. And I'm just folding this up. I'm going to fold it twice. I'm going to fold it in half and fold it in half this way. I just want, oh, about an inch strip. So now I have this little strip. And I'll put a little bit of glue across the top here. And then I'll dip this into the glue and just kind of ease it onto it, the card. I'll repeat that on the other card as well. I've got a little piece of lace that I've decided I want to put on here as well. So I'm just going to trim it to fit. And then we're going to go to the sewing machine. We give it a moment for this glue to dry. And we're going to stitch right across the top which will help hold the lace into place. Okay, we're gonna go over the sewing machine and stitch across the top there. Okay, again, zigzag stitch, same needle, same regular cotton or polyester thread, whatever you use for garments. We're just gonna stitch right across the top. There's my journal cards that we stamped and used some fabric scraps and lace. And then here is my journal page. I'll just pop that down in the corner. I'm liking that. Let me see if there's anything else I want to add. I've decided that I want a little bit more up here at the top. So I have another scrap of fabric. So I'm going to trim this piece. And then I've got another scrap of, this is canvas. I made it a little bit bigger than I need because I'm going to pull these threads so it'll give it a little bit of a frayed edge. So that's going to go up here. So I'm going to do one more. I've got another word here. All right, I'm just going to glue these together. 
Now I'm going to glue this up here at the top. And then I use the envelope, is what this stamp is called, and stamped it on ivory cardstock. And I thought that would look kind of cute to have that sticking out of this little tuck spot here. So we have little layers. All right, so there is a journal page using a mop-up page from the first journal, turtle, journal page tutorial that I shared with y'all. All right, for this journal page, I have a calco collage image from the All About Robins journal kit. It's a digital download. I've printed it as monochrome on white copy paper. I've got a book page. I've got some more images. This time I printed it on ivory cardstock. I've got some junior legal notepad paper, a black piece of text weight paper, some lace, and some other bits. So to start with, what I'm going to do is take this page and I want to fold it in exact half of where the image is. So I just kind of line it up and then find where that center is. That way I know where the center is because I plan to do something else in a moment, but I'll need that guide. I'll take some Aline's Tacky Glue and I'm going to go right around the perimeter of this image and then down the middle. And I'm going to glue this to this book page. Why am I gluing it to a book page? I wanted this paper to be a little bit thicker. And since I didn't print it on cardstock, maybe you don't have a lot of cardstock. Well, if you don't, you can just double up the paper. I'm just using an old gift card, casino players card to smooth out the glue on this piece. Now that I have these two glued together, what I want to do is cut it out, or in my case, rip it out. So I'm just going to start down the middle and then just start tearing both pages together at the same time. And then I'm going to tear off this excess on the outside edge. I failed to say that when I printed this as monochrome on my color printer, I told my printer to print it as an eight by 10 image. That way it would be just slightly smaller than an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. I'm gonna go around the edges with some black soot distress ink. I've got a piece of fabric that I ripped. So basically I take a piece of fabric, let me do that for you. And I make a little snip on one edge. And then I just pull and that rips it. And then I'll just clean off any excess pieces. And then I have this little fun strip that I can use. So what I wanna do is I wanna put this strip right on this edge, but have it look gathered. So I'll put down a bead of glue all the way down this edge. Move my paper out of the way for a moment. And then I'll go on the back side and just put a little bit of this fabric in the glue and then just kind of lightly ruffle it down the edge. All right, so I've got this ruffled on the back side, so I'll just trim off the excess and then I'm gonna repeat it on the other piece on this edge. You can see how that is ruffled up on that edge. This one as well. I'm going to let this dry for a moment and then we're going to go over to the sewing machine. So while I'm waiting for that to dry, I want to work on this piece. I've got an eight and a half by 11 piece of black text weight paper. I bought a bunch of paper many, 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 many years ago. I have collected a lot of things in my stash. So yes, I do have an abundance of items. Don't feel like you have to go and buy everything. You know, a ephemera pack is a good little investment to buy little things at a time, but you don't have to buy reams of paper <laughs> in order to do some of the things that we're doing here. All right, so I've got this page. I folded it in half just so I would know where the center portion is. And I've got this junior legal notepad paper. I've gone ahead and went around the edge with 
distress ink and black soot. And I think I want to put this on the page somewhat down towards the bottom. And I think I also want to do some stenciling on here. So I'm just kind of looking at how I want this. Okay, I've got an idea now. I've got a scrap of paper and I have the quilted starburst stencil and I've got my oval blending tool and black soot distress ink and I'm going to come in here and just give a little pattern to this junior notepad notepad paper so there's one and I'll do the other one okay I like the way that looks and I think the next thing I want to do is I've got this rubber stamp. This is the Tulip Twine. I think that's right. And I want to stamp this. I'm going to stamp it in this bottom corner here. And I'm going to do the opposite on the other page. Now what I'm going to do is glue this down to my text weight paper in the background. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue right in the middle. Because I plan to go to the sewing machine in a moment. And I don't want wet glue when I sew. I've got this piece of lace that I want to put on here. So I'm going to line it up with the edge. Get my scissors. And what I want to do is I'm going to come in here and stitch across here. And stitch around each of these pieces. So we're going to go over to the sewing machine. Alright, so at the sewing machine I have a regular sewing machine. Regular needle, regular thread. I've got it set for zigzag stitch. It's two and two, which is two for the width, two for the length. And I'm going to stitch along this top edge, and then I'm going to stitch around these rectangle portions. So there's my page stitched together. I'll go ahead while I'm here and stitch around these first pieces. So here's the page I stitched together. I'll trim off the excess. Sometimes I cut the lace just a little bit long. It's better to have it too long than not long enough. I've got a couple of pieces of paper here. This is some black cardstock and then an image from the All About Robins. And I thought that would look really cute up here in this corner. So I'm going to glue these together. I forgot before I glued this down that I had this little piece of ribbon that I was going to glue it down underneath. So I'm going to lift it up and stick it back down. Just using leftover bits that I had on my desk. Okay, I like the way that looks. So here's what one side would look like. And then here's the other. So now let's do this side. So on this side, I have these pieces that I added the fabric and tore around the edges. I'll go ahead just to help with getting them centered and fold my page and then I'll glue these down and I want these to be a pocket on this side so I'm going to glue on three sides and make this a pocket. Okay, I'm going to let that dry for a moment and I've got two journal cards here from the Calco Collage Kit All About Robins and I think what I want to do is have these come out of these pockets here so I'm going to put a little piece of fabric on these edges. I've got this black fabric, so I'm going to put a little bit of glue kind of in the middle. And then just drop that in the glue and then kind of ruffle it up just a little bit. I'll trim off any excess. And I'm going to repeat that on this other card. I'll go over to my sewing machine as soon as this glue is dry and stitch down the edge. I'll be right back. Decided while I'm waiting for the glue to dry on this piece to make another little embellishment. So I've got a scrap of fabric in one of these words from Calico Collage. I'll glue these together. And then I have a book page that was a scrap on my desk. And I'll glue down this piece of fabric in Word on top and then trim this. And let's apply some distress inks to the edges. And then I'm going to go over to my sewing machine and stitch right around this outside edge. I'm, I made two of them. Here's another one. And the glue should be dry on here, so I'll stitch those as well. Alright, so now I've got these little pieces. And I thought they might look kind of neat if I put one like right here in the corner. It just kind of gives it a little contrast on the page. 
And then I thought this one could look kind of pretty up here in the corner. And then my journal card. So this one will go in this pocket. So we have that little black sticking out. And then this one will go. So here is my journal page that we just made. This is the torn image. Added some fabric. Made a little embellishment out of some scraps of book page and fabric. It has the journal card in here. Then we flip this over and we've got the junior legal notepad that we stenciled upon. Used a scrap of some ribbon that I happen to have on my desk. The calico collage image. The tulip twine rubber stamp down here at the bottom. Stitching around it. Then we go to this side and we have this journal card. So yet another journal page made. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing this tutorial on making two different types of junk journal pages. Now remember, just because I make my pages flat, if you have a journal that you're working in, many times you can go ahead and just work on a two-page spread, or you could create the page and then paste it into a journal. So just because I do mine this way doesn't mean you have to. Remember, take these ideas and put them to use in the way you would do it, the supplies that you have, the colors and styles that you enjoy. All right, everybody, I thank you so much for watching. Do know that I go live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time, and I hope you'll come hang out with me. Y'all take care. Bye, everybody.